guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is a bit of a special day. As you can see, I'm right here at Ferrari of Fort Lauderdale and today we're gonna have a look at the car that I've been wanting so bad to have a look at in person and that is of course the beautiful Ferrari Roma. Because to me this is not just a new Ferrari, this is a special car. Not just because it's a Ferrari but because of the overall design and approach to the styling, not just exterior but interior as well. And I want to say thank you to Philip and the entire crew of Ferrari Fort Lauderdale for letting me review this car today. So let's start with some of the base facts for the beautiful Ferrari Roma. It starts at $222,000 and it's now actually the entry-level Ferrari. It's the first time in a very long time that the entry-level Ferrari is now a hardtop front engine car. But the thing is, is it front engine? The engine is so far back that technically it is a mid-engine car. The previous base entry Ferrari was the Ferrari Portofino, which started at around $250,000. This shares the same V8, 3.9 liter twin turbo V8 as the Portofino. However, it's been tuned here to 621 horsepower and about 560 pound-feet of torque. So what about the performance of the Ferrari Roma? Well, this does 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.4 seconds with a top speed of 199 miles per hour. I don't think that's too bad for an entry-level car. Now, the 3.9 liter V8 up front is paired with an 8-speed dual-clutch automatic that comes straight from the more exotic SF90 Stradale. So it's not the same transmission that you get in the Portofino. This has been upgraded to the newer 8-speed dual clutch from the SF90. Now let's talk about the rear and exterior design. This is probably the best angle from me for the Roma, although I don't think there is necessarily a bad angle for this car. But what I love about the rear end here is that Ferrari is now going back to the quad taillights. And this is something that's been missing for a very long time starting with the Ferrari 458 in 2010. From there, we've seen mostly a single taillight in each corner of the car, but with the Roma and with the SF90 Stradale, we're going back to the four taillights, which I think is more classic Ferrari, and it kind of reminds me of the models from my childhood. We have the, for example, the F40, of course. We have the 550 Maranello, the 575M, and the 612 Scaglietti, for example. So I'm happy that they integrated the four taillights. And if we look at it from a detail, you can see that they are integrated in the body of the car, which is really cool. They're basically the same shape as the fender here. And you also have the light strip inside of the lights going in the taillight, which is a very cool detail. And if you watched my videos before, you know that I'm a huge fan of line flow. And specifically, when you have the line flow of the car go into the graphic features of the car as well. Now, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Ferrari moves ahead from this design and the SF90 Stradale, because now we're back to four taillights. But if you look at the SF90 Stradale and compare it to the Roma, you're, you're going to see that the taillight design are completely different. You have almost like a little rectangle in the SF90 Stradale. Well, here, the taillights are integrated in the bodywork of the car. Personally, from what I've seen so far, I like this approach a little better than on the SF90 Stradale, but it's still cool that Ferrari is playing around with these design ideas to see what they might come up with. Now, if we open up the trunk, we can see that the trunk is super low to the ground, but it's not really as wide as we're used to seeing. This means that I guess you could have a very heavy package and easily lift it up since you don't have to lift it that high off the ground to get it in the car, but just make sure it's not too wide of a package. So moving on to the front end of the beautiful Ferrari Roma, the thing I really appreciate with Ferrari and specifically the Roma today is that it doesn't need to look aggressive. It doesn't need to have this frowning face that a lot of other supercars and sports cars have today. Even the Toyota Yaris these days are looking angry. I don't know what's the deal with that. But with Ferraris, I think this elegant approach to the front end is a lot more in line with what Ferrari is. It's a car that is confident. It knows what it is and it doesn't have to shout about it. That's, that's the approach that I think suits Ferrari better. And on top, we have these beautiful two lines that guide your eyeballs down to the Ferrari logo in the front, almost like a tendon holding together two pieces of muscles 
in the front end. Now I want to bring attention to the grill of the Roma. You can see that it's a new approach to how Ferrari makes grills. Usually we have the standard black mesh pattern on the grills but here it's body color. It's almost like it, it looks a little bit like an EV. Maybe that's what they want you to think. Maybe that's what, something that they have in the back of their minds for the future to have this approach. And this is a, like, a, a, like a soft push into that direction from the Ferrari design department. Who knows? But I think it suits the car. However, I would love to see what this car would look like if we just had a black mesh in the front. Another detail that I want to mention is that if you look at the daytime running lights here in the rear we have them be part of the ducktail or the spoiler but in the front you can't really follow this line into anything specific when you look at it from a front view and that's something that I would love to see. I would love to have this line right here connect to some piece of the bodywork like we have in the rear that would bring the entire design together. Let's talk about the interior and the entire styling in here. It's brand new. The only Ferrari, modern Ferrari, that has a similar styling to the Roma here is the SF90 Stradale. And I really like the interior and the feel in here. Everything is super tight, very nice. You have this white piping here on this specific model that goes beautifully down the center console and up into the doors as well. And in the middle, you have a 16 inch fully digital cluster that is brand new as well. And on top of that, everything, all the controls you need are positioned right here on the steering wheel, which is really cool because you don't want to have to be mess around with any functions of the car when you, for example, when you're on the racetrack, you want to have your hands at the steering wheel at all times and you have all the controls you need. You have the indicators, the windshield wipers, and the Manitino wheel right there, which was first introduced in 2004 and designed by Frank Stephenson with the F430. You also have a trackpad right here on the right spoke of the wheel, which controls everything in the display. You can swipe it up or down or side to side. And if you have a function, for example, if you have a tiny navigation screen in the, in the, on the right side of the screen and you want to have it bigger, all you do is just press this view max button on the steering wheel and that will pop up the entire navigation covering the full 16 inch display right in front of you. So it's very useful to have that quick button to maximize whatever function you want on the display. Now talking about the mid little display right here in the middle, you have the, for example, the climate controls are controlled by this specific display right here. And that could be a problem if you don't like lag because it feels a little laggy, it's not as responsive. And climate controls is one of these controls that I wish almost every single car had uh, a physical button for because it's one of these functions that you adjust almost all the time, several times a day, most likely, especially if you live down here in Florida. I don't want it to be a navigation that you have to toggle through navigation to just change the temperature of the car. And on the back side of the steering wheel, you have the volume controls for the stereo as well. And on top of that, there is a huge button back here, and that is to flash your high beams. It's a very interesting position for that. And of course, you have this massive carbon fiber wings for the pedal shifters and they feel very good, feel very solid as they should since it is a Ferrari. Now speaking of physical buttons, in the middle here in the center console you have a very cool little funky detail that I really love that they decided to put in here and that is the gear selector right here. As you can see it's supposed to look like a uh, six speed manual gated shifter, but it, it's not fooling anyone. Maybe if you're parked in a dark alley and you walk by some tinted windows, you might mistake this for a six speed manual. But as you can see, we have the functions for the gear selector here. So to the left, we have the reverse toggle. If you toggle this down, you get reverse. And in the middle, we have automatic or manual mode. And on the far right, we have PS, which stands for power start, which is Ferrari's language for launch control. Very cool little detail that I love that they put in the new Roma.
Now, since I was at the dealership, I thought I need to show you what else they had inside there. We had some really cool cars, including this 812 GTS with the target top and of course a couple of super fast, a Pista and all the way in the front end of the entrance to the dealership, they have a LaFerrari that they just sold in white and it looked absolutely amazing. This entire place here is dedicated to Maserati, but of course, we do have some crazy cars in here as well. They are not either Maserati or Ferrari. We have the McLaren Senna right here looking totally insane in this orange paint. And then we have an SLR. This is probably the most common spec that we see on the SLR with the silver and the red interior. It looks beautiful. We have a Urus. We have a Bentley Bentayga. And here we have a Black Series. Just look at the width of these fenders that what makes the black series so special and if you look at the rear it's an insane width on these cars don't make them anymore but when they did they were the king of the sl series for sure and here we have an sl roadster beautiful in black you have the carbon fiber hood here as well i don't know if you can see it on the video but this whole hood here is carbon fiber exposed carbon fiber looks very cool and another bentega and back there we have something really cool peeping out and that is of course a Porsche Carrera GT looks like it's in pearl white oh, it's just a special car very tricky to drive not a lot of assistance for the drivers you need to be an experienced driver if you want to put this to the test as I'm sure all of you know but just look at that wing sticking out it's so crazy it's a cool looking car for sure I hope Porsche makes something like this but with a modern touch and with a modern drive fence. The 918 Spider is, of course, a hybrid, so it does have a regular combustion engine in it. But what I would like to see is Porsche making the Carrera GT, same kind of style, same kind of philosophy behind the car, but make it all electric. So hopefully we will see that in the future sometime. And here we have a very insanely modified Mustang, which I've never seen before. It's called Revenge. Maybe one of you guys knows what it is. Look at the exhaust. We have one pipe there. We have a second pipe right there. And we have the pipes on the side in the corner as well. Crazy diffuser. Everything looks like it's carbon fiber exposed right here. You can see. And here as well. And the massive wing. Same with the roof. It's an automatic clean interior. I've never seen this type of Mustang before. So look at the front end design. It does have the right vibe to it, that's for sure. It does have the muscle car ness that I think uh, modern Mustangs lack. And I did a redesign of that a couple of videos ago, where I kind of added the muscle car ness to the Mustang. And those are my thoughts on the Ferrari Roma. I hope you enjoyed this, my first in-person car review. Thank you so much to Ferrari of Fort Lauderdale for letting me come and review the car. If you're ever in the market for a Ferrari, talk to Philip. He will help you out down here in Ferrari of Fort Lauderdale with whatever your Ferrari needs are. Now, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel because more videos like this with exotics and some car reviews are coming to the channel. With that said, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.